Hello, beautiful people. This is Eric Kearney, president of the Greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky African American Chamber of Commerce. And we have a great show today, an absolutely home run show. We have the great folks, the great folks from Republic Bank. We have Pedro Bryant, the executive vice president of Pedro, of, I'm sorry, not of Pedro Bank, but of Republic Bank. Good morning, Pedro, how are you? I'm doing great, Eric, how are you this morning? Good morning, I'm doing great. And we have Kenneth Webb, everybody knows Kenneth Webb. He is VP and regional CRA, community development officer for Republic Bank. Good morning, Kenneth, how are you? Good morning, Eric, good to see you. Good to see you both. Now, tell us a little bit about Republic Bank. Maybe Pedro, do you wanna start off and, and tell us a little bit about Republic? We'll have Kenneth uh, do the introduction of the bank and then I'll fill in the rest of it. Oh, okay. Well, good morning again, Eric, and those that are joining us. Republic Bank is a bank based out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we have branches all over the state of Kentucky, primarily in Lexington and Louisville and other parts, as well as Nashville, Tampa, and uh, Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati. We have five five branches in the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area, three in Northern Kentucky and two in uh, Cincinnati, one in um, Norwood, the one that I sat at, and then another one in Westchester. Great, great. So how did you, how did you get started at, at, uh, in banking and, and at Republic? Is this, is this for me or is this for Pedro? Well, it's for you, you yeah. Okay, well, this is funny because I started out um, uh, my goal was to be a gerontologist. I uh, oh. go to med school and be a gerontologist. And then uh, I took the MCAT a few times and I said, okay, I gotta make some choices because I can't wait to be on somebody else's waiting list to get into med school somewhere. So I gotta make some money now. So mm -hmm. I didn't grow up in the, the most illustrious uh, background. So we were poor. And so they told me on Monday morning, if you come with this particular bank, you can pay, make this money Monday morning. And I was like, this kind of money, Monday morning. <laughs> and Monday morning was 25 years later. So I've been in the game for 25 years. Um, uh, and I started out by <laughs> I get an opportunity to make some money. And then uh, I've been everything from um, in the retail field to securities and investments, mm -hmm. stocks and bonds, annuities, to doing what I do and what I love to do now, which is CRA and community development. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been an interesting journey, but I love wow. it. That's, that's beautiful. Pedro, would you mind sharing a little bit about your, your background and how you got into banking? Sure. I've been a banker for 37 years. Um, at the age of 16, um, I decided I wanted to be a banker. I grew up in Southeast Georgia. And like um, in many communities, um, there were no um, men of color working in any financial institutions in my hometown. And uh, during career day, 11th grade, I decided that I was going to be a banker. Oh, and so um, um, in college, I decided I'd major in business. I started working for a bank in my hometown in 19 um, few years ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> got a, I spent my first um, year and a half in data processing. The bank got a new CEO a couple of years later, and um, he sat me down after observing me for about six months. And I was 23 years old. And he told me that he was going to make me a bank president by the time I was 37. Whoa. And so um, I took all these banking courses. I um, um, went to the graduate school of banking um, at the University of um, Delaware. It's now at the Wharton School of Business. Then I came back and got an MBA. And from that moment, my career just sort of, sort of took off. Mm -hmm. I've, like I said earlier, worked in data processing. I was a consumer lender, commercial lender managed an investment portfolio. I was controller. <clears throat> and um, when he retired, I left to go work for another bank. Um, but um, um, at age 37 and two months, I became president of a bank in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that was owned by Barry Sanders and John Starks. Uh -huh. and after about four years, my wife and I um, answered the call for a small bank in Louisville that was looking for a bank president. So we've been here 18 years. Um, we sold that bank in April of last year, and mm. uh, Steve Traeger, who's the CEO of Republic, I've known him since I came to Louisville. I played golf with him um, on a number of occasions. 
um, Steve and I sat down and had a conversation and um, um, a week later, I accepted an offer to come to Republic Bank as an executive vice president and managing director of community lending. Um, one of the first charges that I was given was to create this community loan fund that would focus on communities that had been adversely impacted by um, circumstances, the economy, you name it, or individuals um, operating businesses in distressed communities, um, particularly these are mostly minority communities. And so we wanted to start out with something modest that we knew we could, we could reach. And we said, if we could hit our goal after a year, then we could expand the loan fund. And we wanted to make it affordable um, and we wanted to make it a very simple process. And so the loan fund um, is, um, is uh, $3 million. Um, the maximum amount is uh, $50,000 per borrower. The interest rate is 3% fixed, whether your credit score is 601 or 801. And, um, and so we really struggled with how we put this thing together. And we decided that uh, we would make it affordable for everyone um, with low interest rates, um, uh, flexible qualifications. Um, uh, Kenneth has often asked this question and I'm asked this question all the time. Well, what do I need to apply? Well, the only thing we were gonna ask you is to complete a one page application and provide for us uh, tax returns personal for the last two years. And if you've been in business for two years or more, uh, business tax returns uh, for two years. Um, in, in each of our markets, we have a, a contact in the Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati area. It's Kenneth Webb. I'm just a person who's serving as the um, facilitator or quarterback of, of this effort. Uh, but the real stars are folks like uh, Kenneth Webb and the others in our other markets of Tampa, Nashville, uh, Lexington, Central Kentucky. And, um, um, and so once the application is received, um, it's reviewed, submitted, and when um, the processing is all complete, it comes across my desk for a final decision. Um, you know, are there certain industries that you are targeting or are prohibited? Um, you, you know, the, what, when we first started this, um, during COVID, um, my initial thought, and if you and if you let me borrow your imagination for a second, um, in the spring of 2020, a lot of us were working from home, and so you had light switches with kids going up and down. Kids were flushing the toilet, HVACs and units were on all day long. So initially, we thought it would be doctors, electricians, plumbers, and HVAC folks. Um, um, we found that um, in going to Home Depot and Lowe's that these stores were out of supplies and people were doing all kinds of projects. So we said, you know, uh, maybe contractors as well. Um, but our first three or four loans applications that we took were from healthcare professionals. And when you think about it, they were onto something that even as bankers, we didn't see. But it's all around us. And that is too often in our communities, um, there are huge health disparities. And so these healthcare professionals wanted to open up um, mobile medical practices, mobile dental clinics, and um, a nurse practitioner wanted to do the same thing, going into our community, making certain that uh, senior citizens were getting checkups, they were getting their vaccinations. And so our first three or four loans were to individuals in the healthcare sector and then we started making loans to contractors. And so it's been very diverse. What I try to encourage folks to do, and I've told uh, Kenneth this as well, um, you know, in, in our culture and our tradition, we all sort of grew up, especially if you're over the age of 45, we all grew up going to church every Sunday. And every church um, that has um, um, green grass has someone who cuts the grass. Um, all of us know someone who has a lawn care business. All of us know a plumber or an electrician. And with the past 12 months and all of the work that these folks have been doing, um, we're making loans to buy trucks, we're making loans to buy equipment, we're making loans to restaurants. And so it's, it's just, it's a variety of opportunities. If someone is looking for more than $50,000, um, we have a portfolio of products that we can easily fit them to. Um, we had a um, healthcare professional in the Nashville market that was looking um, to expand business. 
and $50,000 was not going to cut it. So we were able to put this person into an SBA loan. Um, and with um, all loan products right now, rates are at all time low. So it's a great time for someone who's looking to borrow. One of the questions that we've had to respond to and address, um, we've had a number of applicants to call and inquire about, well, you know, I don't know if I wanna get this. I'm leaning more towards the PPP loan. Um, the, the loan has a different focus than the PPP loan. Uh, the PPP program is mainly an effort to sustain a business that's focused more along with um, maintaining staff or personnel, um, covering um, mortgage interest or rents, uh, utilities, those types of things that will sustain an organization or sustain a company for a number of months. Whereas the uh, community loan fund is geared towards helping someone establish, grow, or expand a business. Hmm. So, so now, how long do you have to be in business to apply for the community loan fund? Um, I'm going to use an example of a barber. Um, let's say someone um, out there is um, is a barber and they're wanting to grow or start a business. Um, if, if they file taxes um, two years in a row, we need those personal tax returns. If they have um, been in business two years, we're going to want 2020 and 2019 tax returns. Now, let's assume that uh, you haven't been in business for two years, maybe one year, or you've been in business six months. Um, in that case, we would want to see a business plan. It doesn't have to be anything long. It can be uh, a, a three to six page summary of, of who you are, what you're doing, and then some forecasts. And it really needs to be realistic because, you know, um, Banks have been around for a very long time. I've been in the industry 37 years and um, making certain that it covers all of the high points. And so if, if someone's starting out relatively new, um, we just want them to be able to convey what their plans, what their expectations are to us in writing so that as we go to make the decision, they may only have six months of business experience or a year's worth of business experience if they can convey that they have a pretty good grasp of what they're doing and what they're wanting to do, um, we're all about helping this young entrepreneur start his or her business. So if someone wants to find out more about this or get a copy of the one page application, which is really remarkable when you, when you think about it, um, Kenneth, should they see you? Yes, uh, thanks Eric for uh, having us this, uh, on this broadcast. This is one of those kind of uh, um, funds that is definitely beneficial. Um, so often people of color have been uh, locked out and this is an opportunity to help people to understand that there's op there are resources out there to help them, especially during this pandemic. Uh, and so they would reach out to me, the number is on the flyer, the 513-685-1734 number or email me at kweb at republicbank.com. Uh, and that information is on the flyer that's in front of you. And so I, I think those are, are two ways to get in contact with me and then also get, get access to the one page application. Can they come by the branch as, as well? I know you, you have one on, on the Ohio side in, uh, in, in Norwood and in Westchester, I, I believe. And then you have a, a few branches in the Northern Kentucky area. Is it better to do that or, or just use the phone? They, they, can, they can come by, set up an appointment and come by. I have a guy coming by this afternoon uh, who's, who's making his uh, copies of his tax information because he said it was too large to send via email. So he's coming mm -hmm. by this afternoon and they can do that as well, set up an appointment and we can work something out that way. You know, um, we can also, uh, Kenneth or I can, if someone's interested, we can email them the application. The application is a fillable PDF. And so the information that uh, they would want to have when they're doing the application, um, obviously would be the tax ID number of the business. Um, it would be helpful to have um, financial information through 1231-2020 because that type of information is gonna be asked on the application. Um, I think those are probably the most um, important documents to, to have um, just a financial summary through, through the end of the year, uh, since we're so close um, or just, just removed from 1231-2020, having financials for the end of the year available because there are gonna be a couple of questions related to that. On the um, 
personal financial summary, um, it would be helpful to, um, when you sit down to do the application, to um, have available to you your outstanding um, personal obligations, as well as um, on the flip side of the, um, the page, on the reverse side of, not the reverse side, but on the left side of the page, um, listing of assets, um, because we're gonna ask for assets for both, uh, in, in the bottom section, we're gonna ask for assets and liabilities of the owner of the business, and at the top portion, it's, it's more focused on the business. And so um, the fillable um, application can be emailed, uh, just complete it, print it, sign it, scan it, send it back to Kenneth. Um, or if someone is going online uh, to republicbank.com, they can go to our uh, website um, under commercial lending and there is a link to do the application. Um, um, it would be, it's a DocuSign document. Once it's um, signed, it would come to me. And if the application is from the Northern Kentucky area or Ohio, I would send that application to Kenneth and then Kenneth would make contact with the business owner. Okay, now let's talk about those, those pesky things called underwriters, right? And they, um, they analyze loans and we want to know or give people a sense of what's the, what's the bar? Are these, are these loan applications scrutinized very closely? How likely is it that once they complete the application, you will return a, a yes? And, <clears throat> and then um, is, it, is it a negotiation process where let's say somebody applies and they say, I would like a loan of 30,000 can Republic Bank say, come back and say, well, we, we're willing to lend you 25,000, not the whole 30,000. How, how does that process work? If you, if okay. you can share that. Well, um, what I am hoping that 90% uh, of the applicants who submit an application um, will um, complete the application, send it to Kenneth, provide the tax returns, personal and business, it goes through underwriting. And when we look at it, we immediately say yes. Um, however, we do recognize that sometimes um, we have blemishes um, in our credit um, and, and everything's going to be looked at on an individual basis. Um, and if someone has um, a, a blemish, a, a late payment or something that can be explained away, um, we will ask them about it, we'll document it. Um, and the history of, um, of someone's credit um, mainly tells a story. And that's a very important piece of the underwriting process. And so um, if someone has a challenge, I don't always just dismiss it out of hand uh, because things can be explained away. Um, and so in, in those cases, uh, we try to work with, with the borrower. We've had two instances where we've turned someone down and um, um, given them an opportunity to come back uh, a couple months later and we've closed the loan for them. Um, you, as a banker, um, when you have to tell someone you're not able to, to do a loan, you want to always have them walk away from that situation, knowing that um, there are two or three things that I can do, and perhaps I can come back in three months, six months, or maybe a year. Um, and, and that's, um, sometimes that's what has to be done, but it's my hope that uh, we'll be able to honor most requests uh, the first time. And to your point, um, if someone does request, let's say $35,000 and um, we come back with a counter offer of $25,000, if the borrower is willing to accept the $25,000, then we can make that loan for them. Okay. And um, then the, the availability yep. of funds? Um, home fund can be used um, for a, um, a lot of credit for business. And so lines of credits typically have a, a term of uh, 12 months and uh, we can renew those, uh, but at some point we would term it out, uh, but we do make the line of credit available as well. Okay, so that's something good, good to know. So this uh, community loan fund, it's, it's very exciting, I think. I mean, uh, the ability to, to get a loan up to $50,000 or a line of credit as, as you've just shared with us and you only have to fill out one piece of paper and bring your personal and business financials. That seems that seems relatively easy to me. Yes, it is. Yeah, I've been in banking for 37 years, and I have 
never seen a one-page application with a one-page flyer that can be um, uh, be completed, uh, submitted, and uh, and closed in a relatively short period of time. Yeah, that's that's perfect. That really that really is. So, um, do you have anything else that you would like to to share with uh, with our with our members and supporters of the? Uh, Greater Cincinnati African American Chamber of Com Greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky African American Chamber of Commerce. You know, if, if someone has a question, um, um, I take phone calls all day long. Um, and so, if, if someone has a question, I'm open to receiving a phone call, and I'm sure Kenneth is as, as well. Um, that's what we're here for. And um, I would love to help as many entrepreneurs grow or expand their business. Um, as much as possible. And um, um, all it takes is a phone call to answer questions or an email and we get the application and uh, we'll get it moving. The one thing that I always tell borrowers, especially someone who's starting a business is in life, um, all of us have ups and downs. And so if you have a, a, a rough patch, um, it, it, just think of it this way. If, if you wake up one morning and you're not feeling well, um, the first thing you do is pick up the phone and maybe call your healthcare provider to see if you can get an appointment. Um, I think all of us should handle our banking relationships the same way. If you run into a financial problem, the first phone call should be to your banker and explain what's going on and see if they can provide some assistance. Um, because when we ignore problems and we ignore challenges, uh, they don't go away, they only get larger. Uh, Kenneth, is there anything that you would like to, to share? Uh, yeah, I, I like I get, again, I say thank you for the opportunity for us to present uh, about this community loan fund project and this um, community loan fund. One of the things I, I think is, is also essential uh, when we think about public bank, we are, are large enough and tech, technically savvy enough to be what the big banks are but we're also um, personal uh, and intimate with our customers as it relates to helping them with their specific needs. Because so often people feel like they're, they're numbers and they feel like they're being put into a queue and they'll never hear from people again. And so we at Republic, our tagline is it's, it's just easier here, but we try to make that uh, essential because we continue to try to make uh, banking easier for the customers that we have. And so we look forward to the response from this particular access to capital, but we also look forward to um, our relationship that we can continue to do in the African-American community in Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati. So thanks again, Eric, for having us and again for allowing us to present this, this, this particular program to you. Yeah. Well, thank you both for appearing on Access to Capital with the Greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky African-American Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank you, uh, Republic Bank, for being a member of the chamber. We greatly uh, appreciate that. We've been so fortunate to have Pedro Bryant with us, who is the Executive Vice President at Republic Bank, as well as Kenneth Webb, Vice President, Regional CRA Community Development Officer for Republic Bank. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's been wonderful. And uh, Kenneth, one more time, if you could remind people how they can get in contact with you so that they can complete the application, one page application for the community loan fund. Sure, Eric. Uh, my number here is 513-685-1734, or you can email me at kweb, W-E-B-B, at republicbank.com. Okay, for great. the calls great. and the emails. That's right. Get going on it. Fifty thousand up to fifty thousand dollars. This is a great, great, great opportunity. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for giving us this opportunity this morning.